Hey guys, new toy day. I got this uh, digital vacrometer or a uh, micron gauge as they're otherwise known. This is a CPS brand, a VG200. They seem to be a, a good brand from what I've seen. Work quite well apparently. So I got this to go with all the rest of my uh, aircon equipment, my vacuum pump and gauges and that. And um, just to play with as well because we might do some uh, future experiments with some vacuum stuff. But um, I thought we'll uh, see what's inside of this thing and also we'll talk about how these things actually work. Uh, this is a... Uh, a thermistor style. Uh, it uses a, a thermistor inside to uh, detect the pressure and there's a little bit of a trick to how that works because a thermistor is obviously used for uh, thermometers or uh, measuring temperature hence the name thermistor. Uh, but this is being used to uh, measure t uh, pressure so it's a bit of a trick to how that works because they also use thermocouples as well um, to uh, measure pressure. So inside the pack we've obviously got the unit and it takes a uh, 9 volt battery in the back here and uh, we've also got a few other bits, there's just a, a card here with some advertising for the other equipment user manual, uh, a pouch nice and uh, foam lined to keep it safe Oop, comes with a battery even, Energizer, good brand too uh, the adapter, so this can um, connect on it's like a T adapter so you can have it in line on your, your hoses or on your vacuum pump and then a hanging hook that just slides into here so uh, let's first of all take the thing apart and we'll talk about how it works so it looks like to take it apart we can just maybe take the front off and it might just slide open it looks like there's no real clips it's coming apart pretty easy there we go look at that easy done so we've got the LCD in the front two little push buttons tactile uh, micro switch kind of push buttons which is nice doesn't have the usual uh, just gold plated little fingers on the uh, circuit board and the conductive carbon there they're actually real switches so that's that's pretty good you can see up here there's the uh, the uh, connector there that'll be for programming and also calibration they'll um, have an edge connector that they plug on and they'll put certain pressures and whatnot into the uh, the sensor at the bottom and then they'll uh, calibrate it and tell it we're giving you this, so that's what you should be reading. Then on the back, looks like we've got a uh, a micro would be up there. We've got a uh, LC driver down here, and then there'll be some uh, op amps and whatnot for the uh, actual measurement reading. Then we've got a f uh, flex cable that goes down to the thermistor itself, and uh, the battery connector. So there'll be uh, some precision resistors as well, probably these black ones here. I'll zoom in so you can see this a bit closer and uh, we'll have a look at those so you can see the uh, two resistors here they're going to be a part of a Wheatstone bridge that's uh, a precision way of measuring a, a difference in resistance and then hence uh, in voltage or current so the way this works is we have an NTC thermistor in here it's a, a resistor that is variable with the temperature and the NTC means negative temperature coefficient that basically means the resistance drops with higher temperature and conversely as the temperature drops the resistance increases so what we do is we pass a current through that little uh, thermistor there and cause it to raise to a set temperature maybe a hundred degrees centigrade or a reference temperature that we know what it is which that then causes that thermistor to have a certain resistance and we can measure that resistance using what's called a Wheatstone bridge the Wheatstone bridge looks something like this We've got three resistors, and then we have a fourth resistor, which is our thermistor. This is the one that we're playing around with. This one here, in, in this circuit, this one is our reference, so that's the critical one that we've got to calibrate against. It's comparing between these two here. These two are, are two reference ones that we know the value of as well, and they're, uh, they're, they'll be precision resistors our system is trying to balance this resistor and this resistor so this here will go to ground then uh, we've got our output is coming out of here that we're measuring the voltage and we've got an op amp and this is just a bit of a uh, wizardry that controls what's going on here so the op amp is measuring the difference between this and this and then it's applying voltage through a, a transistor or whatnot, or applying current 
to the uh, thermistor to then balance this and this, these two resistors. And when these are balanced, we can measure what's coming out of here, and that's going to be proportional to the temperature of this. So when this is balanced at uh, atmospheric pressure, these will be all balanced and we'll be getting a certain voltage coming out of here. If we reduce the pressure around here, this can, can't get rid of as much heat. It's like a thermos. We can put less current in to maintain the same temperature. If we put the same amount of uh, current through, it's going to increase in temperature because the heat can't get away. There's not as many molecules around at a lower, temp uh, lower pressure to pass that heat onto to get rid of it. So we can measure that difference. The op-amp sees a difference, drops the current through the thermistor, maintains the balance between this and this, these two resistors, and we can see that as a change in the, uh, the voltage coming out of here. That voltage can be calibrated and then can be you know, converted into a direct uh, pressure reading. Okay, so we're set up here on the bench. Got my uh, pump. This is just a uh, Tasco, it's a Japanese brand. They're kind of well known in Japan. It's a TA150 SB-2 Ultra Mini Vacuum Pump. It's two stage pumps so are going to be able to pull a nice vacuum. Uh, I got this because uh, I'm going to use it for um, doing experiments on the bench and also I use it to install my aircons and aircons for friends. It actually turned out when we built my place it was cheaper for me to buy all the equipment and install the aircons myself, me being an electrician that's fine, uh, than getting a professional in. Um, well, another professional in. Uh, their labour costs and whatnot were going to cost more than just buying the tools and then at the end I've got the tools so win-win no worries. Uh, we've got the manifold here once again Tasco and our VG200 CPS branded digital vacrometer. So this is all hooked up uh, so we can pull a vacuum with the uh, the pump. First things first turn the, uh, the unit on and it'll boot. CPS doing its startup checks or whatever. Firmware revision 1.01, no worries. And we got a flashing cursor. This cursor basically means that it's the pressure's too high for it to read. As the pressure drops, that cursor will drop down and then to the bottom of the uh, the figure eight segments in the display and then it will start showing the uh, the actual number. It's just too big. It's and it's essentially meaningless at, at this pressure. You use a different gauge for um, doing pressures at atmospheric levels. So we've got different units as well. At the moment it's on microns. I'll be using microns because I'm familiar with that. But you can also have inches of mercury, uh, millibar and tor, whatever floats your boat, whatever you're um, familiar with. You can set it to whatever you want. So let's turn this uh, pump on and get it pumping down. You'll see that uh, cursor drop. There we go. And drop again. And then we'll start seeing the number. So that will drop rather quickly because it's such a small amount of pipe. There's not much air inside this system. But for your aircon, it might take 10 or 15 minutes to properly pump down. And you want to have it below 3000. If it's above 3000, you're going to have a uh, problem with your uh, aircon. That's a uh, 3000 micron. So, looks like we're probably going to hit about yeah, about 230, 220-ish. We might not get much lower than that. So we'll um, close the valve and turn off the pump. And, uh-oh, it's starting to rise. It will stabilise. The reason why this is rising is because even though we've pulled the vacuum, is the rubber is permeable and uh, there's gas molecules that are outgassing from the rubber, in, from all the pores in the rubber. Also, the grooves of the machining in the metal... Uh, the gaps, like where the uh, joins are and whatnot, there's uh, air molecules just hiding in there and they're all coming out because there's a vacuum. So that all stabilise. Looks like it's going to stabilise about 4.30. Maybe it'll drop, uh, rise up a little bit more while I'm talking. But uh, it, with your aircon, you want to do this. Let it sit for about 10 minutes or so. Make sure it's not going to go up above 3,000. If it does, start looking at some reasons why. Maybe there's some moisture or water in the lines. And under pressure, that's going to boil off, become water vapor. This will read that as a um, as an increase in pressure. Also, you might have a leak or something, so you've got to go and check all your joints. But um, that seems to be relatively stable. Uh, I have to give it a few more minutes to really stabilise. But 
for the demonstration that's good enough uh, to turn the unit off just hold the button in and off no worries now I've actually got an aircon which I'm going to be installing uh, in my house we're re replacing an old unit with a, uh, a new one new nice new Mitsubishi so let's go outside hook this thing up and see how it performs in the real world outside now got the new Mitsubishi hooked up in place of the old Hitachi we had an old Hitachi actually it was a new one but got it for a friend for free it was like one of those uh, damaged goods items but it was not performing very well not because of the damage it's a little bit dented on the outside scratch and dent but um, it just wasn't performing very well so we got the uh, new Mitsubishi to match all the rest of the units in the house much higher end model and being Mitsubishi it's a very high quality unit so that's all plumbed in right up to the second floor way up there all nice and uh, we got the uh, the vac line coming up to the uh, port here to suck down coming around into the gauge block and then all this is connected up the same as on the bench just before we got the uh, micron gauge, gauge block and our vacuum pump so let's turn this one on sorry about the shake I'm uh, hand holding this at the moment so that'll boot like normal tell us the uh, firmware revision and then it'll give us the uh, icon across the top the little uh, flashing bar that's just saying, like I said before, that the uh, pressure is too high. So let's turn on the uh, pump. And that should drop down pretty quick. Well, a little bit longer than on the bench, just because we've got a lot more pipe to suck down. But give it a moment. You can hear the pump changing note as it's uh, pulling the air out. All right, right down at 330 micron, that's really nice and low. If I uh, go and just turn off the valve here, and that's gonna come back up a bit. That's normal, that's all the gas just coming out of the pores and the pipes and whatnot, like I mentioned before. But that will stabilize at a pretty low number. So that's under 500, that's, that's really good actually. So we could um, continue pumping down. We're gonna open the valve again keep dropping it down so it's as perfect a vacuum as we can and uh, it will be all good all right guys that's pretty much it for now this thing seems to work quite well I'm pretty happy with it so uh, definitely worthwhile having one of these if you're doing your uh, your air cons all right guys don't forget we got the patreon keep watching the videos we'll see you next time